North Carolina, Jim Tom is schooling Wayne in the ways of a master shiner. Pardon me, thanks, Scott. I was supposed to taste. Sorry, just like it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to run, though. Let's run it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start pouring some of this it, 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 in there. Okay? Always put it in there before you build the fire, because if you don't, you burn the bottom out. There she went, just like a hot air balloon. Hoo-hoo, oh it ain't going to be long. That big T user putting her to boil it. Oh, that. What kind of proof do you think we're going to get out of this? It was pretty stout. I'm gonna say about 145 this this time. Next week, probably 150 to 60. That'll work. That, yep. You got a lot of alcohol coming out of there. Yeah. It'll start in a minute. Get that worm filled up in there. Okay. Look at there. Pull that, pull that now. Let me set this note. I want to show you something. Okay. I'll show you a little trick. Okay. Some black oh, powder. Oh, I think I, I, I never really used the powder, but I know what you're talking about. Using the term proof to indicate alcohol content had its beginnings as far back as the 18th century, when British sailors developed a test to determine whether their daily ration of rum was watered down. They soaked a small amount of gunpowder with the rum liquor drenched powder would still ignite, then it was proof that the booze was at least 40% alcohol. They take black powder, uh -huh. and then they'd pour some of their alcohol they're wanting to proof on top of it. Then they light that, and if it sparks, then that's high proof. Wow, sir. <laughs> Damn. That's some proof. I'm gonna see if that is a true test. You see it? Hey, get that lighter up here in my mouth while I blow it. A little high, but the taste is good. All right. 